Welcome. This module will serve as a brief introduction to ultrasound, an extremely useful and powerful tool to aid in clinical diagnosis, treatment, and management of patients. The name suggests ultrasound utilizes sound waves as a mechanism of effect. Sound waves, at specified wavelengths and amplitudes, travel through conductive media, and when it encounters an object, one of two things happens to some degree. The waves either reflect off of the object or goes through it. Sound waves are generated from small crystals within the ultrasound probe. Then when they encounter an object, like organ or tissue, some portion of the sound waves bounces off and returns to the probe, while another portion travels through and hits another object before reflecting back to the probe. Ultrasound machines can then measure the intensity or amplitude of the returning echoes and analyze this information to produce an image on a screen in grayscale. The brightness of individual portions of the screen is determined by the strength of the returning echoes. Not just a simple imaging modality, ultrasound is a major diagnostic tool which provides fast and reliable patient care information in a short period of time. The use of ultrasound at the bedside extends into all medical specialties. No matter what discipline within medicine one chooses to pursue, a strong foundational knowledge of ultrasound is an extremely powerful tool. There are a number of different ultrasound probes which are three of the most commonly used. The curvilinear probe is used to image deep structures, often within the abdomen. The probe uses sound waves of a lower frequency, which will travel further and penetrate deeper within the abdominal structures. However, this sacrifices some resolution of the image. Here we can see that the curvilinear abdominal probe is used to look at a gallbladder, and we can even, we can even visualize small stones within the gallbladder. The linear probe is used to image more superficial structures, often skin or soft tissue. The probe uses sound waves of a higher frequency, which generates a better quality image with great resolution, but sacrifices depth of penetration. Use this probe to look at retained form bodies, like large splinters or needles, or even the eye as seen here. We can use it to look for papal edema or even retinal detachment. Is the ray probe is narrower than the linear probe and has a great temporal resolution which means it can be used to look at things that are moving. It is often used to look at the heart when you're doing an echocardiogram. Here the probe is placed at the apex of the heart, right over the point of maximal impulse. You generate a great view of all four chambers of the heart. In general, you use any probe to look at any structure. If you think about what you're actually trying to image and how deep the structure lies within the body, then you can create the best image by picking the appropriate probe. The ultrasound probe, an indicator notch, or a selection marker on one side. By convention, we hold the probe with the indicator pointing to the patient's right or to the patient's head. This way, we can standardize the orientation of all of our images that we acquire. On the images on the left side of the screen, we are holding the probe with the indicator pointing to the patient's right. On the image, the indicator dot will be the patient's right side. The top of the screen is anterior and superficial, and the bottom of the screen is posterior and deep. Now that we're oriented, we can see that this is an image of the liver, with the hepatic veins draining into the liver, emptying into the inferior vena cava. On the next image, the indicator dot is pointing towards the patient's head, so that in the image, the dot is towards the head, or cephalad. On the other side, is towards the patient's feet, or caudad. The top of the image is still anterior and superficial, while the bottom of the image is still po uh, posterior and deep. Now that we are oriented, you can better see this image of the lung, which is cephalad, and the liver, which is caudad. In between them, you've seen an anechoic or dark fluid collection, just cephalad to the diaphragm, which is the pleural fusion. Remember, the images generated are 2D. Image a three-dimensional structure, Two different views of the same structure in different orientation are needed to recreate a mental image of a three-dimensional organ. The images generated in ultrasound are in gray scale. When something is black, we call it anechoic, meaning there are no echoes reflecting back to our probe. Hypoechoic means darker, while isoechoic means gray. Hyperechoic means lighter and wider. Different organs and tissues in the bodies will reflect or absorb sound differently, 
resulting in different echogenicity or brightness of tissues reflected on the screen. Fluid is often black or anechoic. And this is because sound travels so well that so few of it within the liquid actually reflects back to the probe, making the probe think that nothing is there. Sound travels very poorly through air, which is why almost all of the sound waves will reflect back to the probe, making air appear bright white. Different densities of tissues will reflect sound differently, creating a grayscale image on the screen. Once the ultrasound machine has been turned on and the probe is placed on the patient with the marker towards the patient's right or the patient's head, you may have to adjust the image on the screen. There are two main functions we can use to optimize the image, the first of which is the gain. The gain will dial up or down the general brightness of the screen and will make everything look more echogenic, just like the volume switch on a stereo to adjust the level of volume that you are receiving from your speakers. On the left, we have a picture of the liver. Again, and the left side of the image is just a bit too, it's just a bit too bright and we turn it down so we can see a little bit more clearly the fluid within the vessels of the liver. On the other side of the screen, if you put down your probe and everything is dark, you may want to take up the gain again to make it a little bit brighter and easier to see. Another function which will help optimize the image is depth. You may need to increase the depth to focus on deeper structures or decrease the depth to focus on more superficial structures. On the first image, when we initially place the probe upon the patient, it is not quite clear what organ we are imaging. So we increase the depth, and now we see that there are clearly two distinct organs. The top is the liver, while the bottom is the kidney. And this is a good depth for the image because we have optimized the depth to view both structures of interest. Now if we go even further to increase the depth, the sound waves penetrate even deeper into the retroperitoneum, far beyond the liver and the kidney, our organs of interest. So the goal is to fill the screen with exactly the structures of interest, no more and no less. So with this basic introduction, you're ready to ultrasound. Remember a few key steps. First, turn on the machine. Next, place the probe upon the patient with the indicator to the patient's right or to the patient's head. Then. Orient yourself as to which way is the patient's right or left, head or feet, and anterior and posterior. Lastly, adjust the gain to see the best resolution of adjacent structures, and adjust the depth to image your specific structures of interest, no more and no less. Enjoy your ultrasound experience. Remember, practice often and continuously seek feedback to improve your technique. You'll be amazed at the number of practical applications in which your ultrasound knowledge will benefit your decision-making process. Thank you.